out and mm. get my, teach myself to drool. Um, which thinking of lemons helps a lot, by the way, for that. Mm. Um, and I had my teeth that I made myself in there, and I was drooling so close to this kid's feet, <laughs> and I had him backed up to a fence, crying, just cowering in fear, and it was fantastic. And that mom was so mad at me, so mad at me. But then my supervisor's kind of like, oh, look at the signs, like, this is a haunted attraction, and this is what you can expect out of it. <laughs> Um, and then I had a couple friends that came and they uh, wanted to see me in action and uh, they had never seen me act so heartless <laughs> towards people out of pure enjoyment of their fear. And it was hard to like push myself just to like let go and become that person because I still have that mentality like you're in and you're out like okay you're not scary after this long but now I'm realizing yes I am <laughs> <laughs> I really am <laughs> and uh, I had to just use it to my advantage but it was it was a blast absolute blast um, his voice is hard to master and I was mm. definitely very hoarse after that um, sometimes there's a giggle that comes out sometimes like if someone makes me laugh um, and it's uh like in some of the trailers, you'll you'll hear his like little like high pitched giggle, mm. and if if you catch me just right, it'll come out sometimes. And uh, people usually just kind of stop and stare at me at that point. They're like, "What was that?" Mm -hmm. like, uh, it just comes out. Can't help it. I don't think about it. It just happens. Um, so some quirks of that still stick around mm -hmm. today, <laughs> but at least it's not the crazy things. Did you apply the makeup completely to yourself, oh. or did you have help? Oh yes, sir. Um, I had a actually I still have the brow piece down in my makeup kit. Um, I, when I peeled it off, it came off as a pretty good hole. It was kind of cool. Um, I built up. It was latex prosthetics um, all up into here. Um, I had to build up my nose a bit. I had a wig piece that actually came up, so my head had that rounder, mm. bigger shape to it. And I actually put tissues under it just to support it, so it didn't look funny and collapsed if you pushed on mm. it. Got to think of that stuff. Um, and it took me about two hours uh, to build up my face. Um, I, had, I had to shave my, my mustache and beard off, and um, I made sure to take about five days off work so no one had to see me without it. Because <laughs> um, the latex was going all the way down into here, and that doesn't, that body hair, mm -mm. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. And then I had to uh, black out my eyebrows with uh, a glue stick, and <laughs> that you smear it on, and then that way when you put your latex on it, it doesn't stick to them. Because uh, I had to build up, I had to build up my brow uh, to give a bigger uh, forehead to build in our color in those uh, eyebrow lines. Because they're not, he doesn't actually have eyebrows; they're just lines. Mm -hmm. um, That's right. Yep. And then the costume, I was able to buy in parts. Um, that was kind of expensive at the time because it was still super new, but um, it looked great. <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a newer costume I want to get to update it, so like uh, the legs look a little bit better and the arms do, but. Um, it definitely served its purpose, and my favorite part, the boots were fantastic. <laughs> and like little puff balls on the toes, and gives it that little bit of innocence when then as you look up, the rest of me it gets just worse and worse and worse, and more and more blood as it starts pooling by my, uh, by, <laughs> in my chest. <laughs> yeah, you gotta check it out on his uh, Facebook page, folks. It's incredible makeup. We'll have the link to that for sure. <laughs> And then uh, before that, the biggest character I did was a Silent Hill nurse, <laughs> and uh, that was that was fun. That was different. There's uh, two or three of us that did it, um, and we all kind of just had this mutual understanding that these costumes are going to be very uncomfortable, but we just accepted it. Um, I had a corset put on me, and Ooh. that was hilarious. <laughs> um, from earlier in my careers of giving tours at different museums around the area one was a victorian mansion so i know all about corsets and how they work and how to apply them and all that so um we're standing up in the costume area there's uh steel beams that go across the the top of the room so i had myself holding on to those and my buddy had his uh was lacing up the corset around me this foot on my back lacing that sucker up Oh, it hurt really bad. It was hard to breathe, but it was worth it. Absolutely worth it. Um, and then the face of them, it's covered with all this nasty gauze, and it's deformed. It's, like, radioactive, just gross. And they don't really talk, but they move really mechanically and jerky, and they're really unpredictable. And when I was outside, I had 
I'm I get amazed. I was well, I wasn't really amazed. I guess I wasn't surprised. But uh, there were a lot of people that their response to you is to try and hit on you, and a lot of um, <laughs> these people are unsuspecting men realizing I'm a dude. And like they figured out later <laughs> when uh, oh it was hilarious like I just thought it was great um like I had somebody compliment my butt and I just turned around in my low voice I'm like thanks <laughs> and the group of friends that he was in they just did they're like oh man and he <laughs> was questioning absolutely everything which I didn't cover up my arm hair so I didn't I just thought you could look at my arms and figure it out but apparently not. Apparently not. It wasn't looking at your arms. <laughs> no, it was not. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Must have been that corset. <laughs> That's it. Accentuating everything. <laughs> um, what, you, what is your process when you uh, create makeup? Uh, do you make a sketch first for some things? Um, you just start painting or play around with clay? I've learned that I have the best luck if I just wing it. Um, I like, I, well, I don't like go in completely blind. I do my research. Um, I figure out techniques and how to approach it. And then, um, this, when it comes to sketching, I'm like, to be honest, I'm not super good with it. Um, just kind of creating the final product is where I, where I do best. Um, and I just go to town, hope for the best and mm -hmm. what comes of it, what comes of it. And, uh, there I've had some that looked absolutely stupid and I'll just start over. That's fine. That's what canvas is there for and uh there's others that turns out absolutely phenomenal uh right from the get-go and that got pretty lucky with a lot of those throughout the years um if somebody wanted to pay me to do their makeup for like a halloween party costume contest anything like that then i would definitely take more time to practice and figure out my techniques and what i'm going to do with them because for that that's a different situation mm -hmm. than just my my haunt like my haunt they're in a dark room they can just hide their face if they need mm -hmm. to um, or I could just splatter blood on their face and cover it up and pretend it never happened. But for a costume contest, you can't really do that. You're focusing on them head to toe and making sure everything's perfect. But mm -hmm. um, for those situations, I'll I'll do some deeper planning and thinking about how to execute it or practice on myself, um, even just to master some techniques. But generally, I'd wing it. <laughs> what was the longest time it took for you to apply makeup to someone? three and a half hours whoa well, is that just a face or is it body too? um that was actually a full body oh, um yeah okay that makes sense so um and then three and a half hours was it it wasn't super 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 extravagant um it looked great for what they were using it for um they were doing a, a photo shoot um that was about uh kind of nursery rhymes um and kind of the inner demons and those so it was mm -hmm. really cool um i think there's pictures of her on uh on my Facebook page, she's uh, the green, green uh, creature with some horns on her forehead. But um, yeah, that was a pretty full body, uh, full body work there, and uh, that took some time uh, to accentuate some details. Uh, that was also my first time doing that kind of um, body painting, so it was it was different for me to be like, all right, this is a naked person, and okay, <laughs> okay. And then I don't know, after probably like five minutes, you're like, okay, whatever, it's just canvas. <laughs> yeah. But um, and but for your first time, it's always like, oh, oh God, what do I do? <laughs> um, Where do you start? Then you start painting. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, like, uh, okay, um, do I start up here? Do I, like, belly button area and move up? I don't know. <laughs> so I just started from the top down. <laughs> I'm just curious about... Um the whole uh, running of a haunt what are some of the biggest challenges in uh, running a haunted attraction oh my uh, <laughs> what well, aren't as he erased was it to, every department has its interesting quirks um makeup i'd say is pretty much the most straightforward um then you just we, i would go over to the entertainment center we would uh, sit down and I would put in my order for everything I needed. They thankfully provided a budget so they would buy me the makeup products because that's expensive, super expensive. Mm. Um, that would be the, the biggest headache for that department. Costuming, it's a matter of uh, upkeeping or making costumes that suit your haunt or seeing if you can just reuse a ton of them because we had probably thousands of costumes that have just been used and like they get washed and all that in the off seasons but uh um, there's so many different ways you can utilize them um, without spending more money and getting more. Um, mm -hmm. We're trying to like hire out a seamstress or something to change stuff up. So coming up with different costume ideas could sometimes be a challenge. Um, 
this you do a lot of shopping at thrift shops and like goodwills uh for a lot of those things you don't spend a lot of money on those kind of costumes you're just gonna get destroyed so no absolutely not so <laughs> it's also a lot of luck of the draw too at that time um see if you can find anything that suits what you're looking for um construction it's always remembering uh what did it, how did I explain it to somebody you have to think of it like you're somebody that's losing their mind and make sure that wall can handle somebody running full speed into it wow. um, I, I had my test and it was hilarious um, I would go through it after people build the areas of it, I would just start flailing and run into a wall and if it stayed sturdy <laughs> I'm like alright good <laughs> pass the test mm -hmm. so if you just imagine me flailing my arms going like smack <laughs> that's how I would do it now where I would just like give it a good kick um, did that actually ever you, happen to a guest? Did mm -hmm, they they did mm -hmm. run into oh, all, all the time, all, all the, the time, time. <laughs> all the time is hilarious. Um, that was probably there's a couple of years where I purposely put traps just so they would run into it, um, and it, it was just out of pure enjoyment. I thought that was funny, and I would when you run a hunt like that, you set traps like that because you want some entertainment, um, and uh, they would run into a plexiglass wall or. Uh, just a black wall that they like if you are paying attention to where you're going you'll see it but that's when you figure out the people that aren't paying attention to where they're going mm -hmm. and there's smack and they're like oh yeah that's what you get you know mm -hmm. um, it's one of those concepts it's just for entertainment um i wish we could have like scare cams in those spots just to capture those images but yeah. uh nope i got to witness it sometimes mm -hmm. and you mentioned that you went to a uh a haunters convention i didn't even know these yeah. existed oh yeah they're cool <laughs> they're super cool midwest hunters convention now it's in chicago um but now uh, when we went it was in columbus ohio and i went two years in a row the first year um well both years we went on the pre-convention bus tour and that was two or three days of different haunts and both times we drove through um indiana to michigan and back uh from columbus oh, wow. And uh, got to see the first year, I think it was like nine or ten different haunts. The second year was about 12. Um, and the second year, we got to see a haunt called Erebus. It's in Pontiac, Michigan, and that was by far the coolest haunt, um, technologically speaking, that I've seen. Um, they're a multi-million dollar haunt. They make wow. so much money every season. Um, like a ticket, I think, was 25 bucks. Just to go through it but uh of course with our with our convention we got the free like we paid for it with our passes um you're going so but, you're going to this uh um these haunts when it's in season mm -hmm. actually off season oh, in the summer awesome. before yep yeah, they um, in. yep yep so they nice. usually would uh, would tell these people i think they would plan it like or they signed up for a spot like a year or two ahead so they knew um that the convention bus tours would be coming through and so there's hundreds and hundreds of us haunters coming to see or coming on these big coach buses i think we had three of them full of us um to come through these haunts and oh it was so fun like we, i was in bus one and we we're like the low-key like patient but like we had we had fun without having to get like super trash but like mm -hmm. bus two was party bus um and they would start their drinking right from when right when they got on the bus mm -hmm. and they kept it going and they would come up with games like going through haunts with their pants off or <laughs> Like, mm. really weird things. Like, it was just weird. Like, they just had their own little world, whatever they did. And then Bus 3 was kind of like like us in Bus 1, where we're just like, oh, we're just happy to be here. Um, but going through these haunts, it was such an eye-opening experience um, to seeing super extravagant, super fancy haunts to, like, lower key. Um, they build it themselves with just some OSB chipboard and some screws and um that's kind of like how we were on the urban like well, we had our braced walls nice two by four braced like plywood but we also i've been through the osb phase of using using hinges and straight brackets to hold them together back mm. in the day like, and that's all it took um and now with how intense these haunts have to become you have to build these walls a little bit more uh, sturdily because people run into them <laughs> or actors bang on them uh, so things have definitely come a long way and it was cool to see that progression through all these different haunts uh, mm -hmm. across the country at this point and how they utilize their space and their budget wisely and there was there QA and a afterwards with the creators um some of them yes uh some had lights on tours um so we could go oh. back in and see it uh, behind nice. the scenes uh, so i was able to learn some tricks and tips with that um 
some of them they didn't give us the lights on tour but they would let us ask them questions or um, if we're going through like you didn't have to go through exactly like a customer